Hello, welcome back. I'm Noreen Burke from The Crafty Organizer, where I love bringing you ideas for organizing, decluttering, DIYs, and the occasional craft. Today is the second design for the advent calendar series that I'm doing. And this is one that I've done before on a different way. I have loved using blocks for decor and gifts. So let me show you what I'm gonna do for this countdown calendar. Let's get started. Here's the inspiration from our previous video. And I was really excited to do this one because I've already done several projects in my past with these blocks. Now you'll be super surprised at where I get these. I go to Lowe's, I go to the back where they're cutting lumber, and I ask whomever's working there if they have any remnants. These are going into the trash. So if someone picks up a two by four and they have it cut down to size, whatever is left over is usually discarded into the trash. So ask, don't be afraid to ask. What you'll want to do is pick sizes that are tiered. I'm going kind of for a little Christmas tree here. The other thing you'll want for this project is a chalkboard. I got mine at the Dollar Tree at their Crafter Square, but I know you can pick these up at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, any of your Michaels. I did not want my blocks to be black, so I took some white acrylic paint and just started painting them. Now, interestingly, we are having crazy weather here in Southern California. It has rained, it has hailed, we're having gusty wind, and it was 89 degrees, all in the span of 24 hours. Insane. So while I was letting these dry, I went ahead and started working on the printable. Now, this is a gift for you guys. I made two sizes, one that's a 12 by 12 so that you can print it on scrapbook, and the other is an eight and a half by 11. I just went with the common countdown things, but I left this as a Word document so that you can edit it for whatever it is you are counting down towards. Maybe it's an anniversary, maybe it's a retirement, maybe you have a special birthday. So feel free to adjust these, change the font, change the size, have fun with this. I chose to print mine on vellum. I love the look of vellum. If I don't decide to put anything behind it, it just looks frosty and really pretty. But if I do decide to put paper behind it, I can change my mind as often as I want by just putting a different piece of paper behind it. Vellum has always been one of my favorite things to use when crafting because it's so versatile. So if I choose to have Christmas, I can. If I choose to go into a spring color, all I have to do is change the color behind the vellum the words will still shine through, and I just get this lovely soft coloring behind it. Now, the other reason I chose to do it this way is I know a lot of you do not have crickets, and I wanted to make this super simple for you. Whichever way you print it, whether it's the eight and a half by 11 or the 12 by 12, there are faint lines for you to cut along with. But again, this was sized for my blocks, for the two by fours, and my blocks were about seven inches long, so I made the strips six inches. If you're doing smaller blocks, just go ahead and size the words down to fit accordingly. So here's a quick demonstration of how we're gonna do this. Our family has decided to do a vintage retro 50s theme for Christmas. So I'm doing a lot of teals, pinks, greens, and reds. So all I'm going to do is mat some paper and then stick it to the block. Here's how I'm going to attach it. I've got some thumbtacks and you could just put the thumbtack in. If you're not planning on swapping out the sentiments, you can just glue it. But I wanna swap this out. So I got some instant glue and I'm applying a thin solid coat to the top of this thumbtack and then I'm adding some fine glitter to the top. This is just going to amp up the look of this and it was a really inexpensive. I got I think 50 of these thumbtacks from the Dollar Tree for a dollar and I have a ton of glitter. I found some embellishments like this at Hobby Lobby and they were almost five dollars for only 12 of them. So you can make a ton of these glittered thumbtacks for almost nothing. I did tap the glitter onto the glue just to make sure it had a nice even coverage and then set those aside to dry. The first block is going to be where the countdown chalkboard is. The second block is for the days until, 
And then the third block is going to be whatever it is you are counting down towards. So here's what it's going to look like once we get it all put together. Let's start off by how to attach the papers. My thumbtacks are dried and I think they look great. I'm very happy with the sparkle on them. When you print this out, you'll notice that the days until does not have a box around it. You'll want to let that be the total size of your block. And that way you don't see the cutout portion of it. Now, if you don't mind the look of that, this is your project. You get to do whatever you want. <laughs> but I didn't want to see any cutouts. And like I said, I don't want to glue it on there. So the thumb tacks press right in because the two by fours are just pine, so it presses in really easily. Once I got all four done, the next step is taking off the excess paper. I have a sanding block here, but you can use a nail file, and I'm just going to sand off the excess paper. And you can see, once it gets fine, you just kind of pull it off, and it gives us this really cool distressed edge. So I'm gonna do that to all four sides until all of the excess paper is off. And here you have it. It just looks like it was printed on and it has this nice weathered look to it. Now I'm gonna glue down the chalkboard. Now mine had a hole in it because it's supposed to hang and I decided at the last second I didn't want that visible. So I flipped mine around towards the top because I already know I'm going to put a bow on there. If you're using something like this, you could easily just fill in that little circle with some black paint and no one would be the wiser. Now let's work on that third block where the actual words are going to go. You will pick whatever paper theme that you want and you can either just do a single layer, you can go ahead and map them out, I was having a really tough time deciding because I want that vintage retro 50s look and for some reason none of this was clicking with me so I kept playing around with different colors. This is kind of what I'm going for but even that's not exact. So I abandoned the multi patterns and just went for something really simple so that I can use whatever decor I add later to be the focal point. Now we're going to prep our chalkboard. When you get a new chalkboard, you need to completely cover it with chalk. So I'm taking my finger and smudging it all the way through. Then get whatever rag or paper towel that you're using and go ahead and buff it off. Try and get it to that dark gray or black color. Once that's done, every time you write on it, it will go on smoothly, but most importantly, it will wipe off easily. No ghost impressions. The very last step we're going to do is embellish it with some ribbon. Now you could wrap it all the way around and, and just tie a bow on the top. I decided I wanted each block wrapped. So I'm so weird. I didn't want to waste my ribbon because I already know I'm going to take this apart and change it for the next holiday. So I didn't want this ribbon to be cut and then have to be thrown away. So I got a stapler and I stapled the ribbon in so that it would be flat and not inhibit the block that sits on top. But that way I don't have to glue it because glue would ruin the ribbon and I don't have to cut it. Please leave me a comment below. Am I so strange for doing this? I don't know. Cutting ribbon so that I can't use it later just for some reason bothers me. So I left this one as long as possible. I wrapped it the other direction, which I was thrilled with to see that the other side of the ribbon had a different pattern. I just stapled that in again so that it doesn't cause the block to be unbalanced. And once that was in place, I went ahead and wrapped some ribbon around the top block, and that one I did have to cut. Then the final thing to do was go ahead and wrap some ribbon around the base and it's absolutely coming together now. You can see where we're going with this. And lastly, a sweet little bow on top. This was such a quick and easy project and I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think this is going to be the perfect start for my retro 50s Christmas coffee bar this year. I wish I had some vintage decor to add to it. I'm gonna be making as much as I can, but this is definitely the color scheme I'm going for.
I'd love to hear what you think about this in the comments below. But so far, I'm really happy with it, and I know I keep saying it's my favorite every time I do one of these, but this one's my favorite. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked today's video, please make sure to give it a like and click that subscribe button. I'm really excited to bring you a lot of different things over the next couple weeks. And if you're subscribed, you'll get a notification whenever I post. Also, a huge thank you to those of you who have done a pay it forward for my birthday. I very much appreciate that. If you don't know, my birthday is coming up and I had asked for a gift, which is rude, I know, but I'd asked if you were so inclined that you pay it forward to someone else, either by an act of kindness or if you have something that you could share with them via your time or your money, uh, and then tell me about it. That was my gift. So to those of you who have already done that, thank you so much. I am keeping a list running, and I'm going to post it on my actual birthday for everyone to get to see what I got. So thank you so much. And most importantly, thank you to my Patreons. If you are interested in supporting even in a very small way, my Patreon information is in the description below. And these supporters are absolutely making it possible for me to go out and do the virtual organizing for people who can't otherwise afford it. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I'll see you guys in just a few days. Bye.